I want it on camera. If the glass gets broken, it's Liam's fault. That's it, yep. yeah. <laughs> Liam wishes he bought a wagon. No. Just, just so he could do this. Marine adhesive. Got to be waterproof. Means, yeah, which means you'd hope it's waterproof. Well, you know, it is going to be going in pretty deep bug holes. So oh, no, so. <laughs> up to the windows, you reckon? Hey guys, and welcome back to Aussie Arvos. We are back here working on the Red Patrol again, next mod. Uh, if you're anything like pretty much every other GQ I've ever seen, these window seals will probably be gone. So we have a fix for that right here. So this is a classic kill two birds with one stone scenario. Um, that window seal is gone, it leaks and it's rusty and I don't want the rust getting into the actual body. Uh, I also want to gain access to the back. I'm going to put drawers and a setup in there so I want to have full access to the, to the uh, back of the car. And this is the solution. This is an emu wing. Uh, it's like a gull wing um, rear window replacement and I think they look mint. It's going to be really good for access and uh, yeah, good for getting at everything in the back as well as replacing the rusty old seals. Apparently, like, when the car was brand new, it would have been really easy to take out. Yeah, probably. But it's now not it's like anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, hang on. See how that doesn't, um... Yeah, they're a bit... Yeah, they always yeah. go stiff. Yeah. So, I've put an emu wing in the driver's side of the car. Um, you can get them for either side, or you can get a matching pair. Uh, the reason I'm going with the driver's side is the rust is worse in this side for a start, so I obviously want to replace this side first. Also, it's just going to be better for access for me. I want to be able to get out of the driver's seat and grab whatever I need straight away, right from the side of the car I'm already on, not having to do laps and that sort of thing. That's kind of half the point, is you're not having to open the boot and reach into things, it's just right there, you know? The only downside of that, I suppose, is you're on the roadside, but the amount of times I actually pull over on the side of the road in the suburbs are very minimal, so um, it's not really gonna be a problem for me. Obviously, the first step is to get out this old seal. Now, as I was saying to Liam before, um, when the car was new, it probably would have come out and gone in quite easily. It's obviously not anymore. It's been in the sun for 30 years, so that's that's gonna be, we'll see how much of a challenge it is to get out. They have been known to not be, they're not impossible, but they've been known to be a bit hard to do. So apparently it's just a matter of sliding the window open, which this barely slides, which is another reason I wanna get rid of it. Peel out the front, start at the front, and then once that's a, a bit of the way out, slide the window shut again and just work the rest of the seal out. Um, this is just a plastic pry bar or a trim removal tool, which I'm using to pry away at the inside, rather than using a screwdriver or something and just packing the um, interior plastics up. That should hopefully pop the seal out without damaging anything. Liam can play catch the uh, window. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I want it on camera. If the glass gets broken, it's Liam's fault. That's it, yep. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's oh. already fallen out. Don't tell me it's just easy to, to break into a patrol. <laughs> <laughs> play catch the window, Liam. Just watch it. It's not gonna fall out. Yeah. Famous last words. So is it just the seal on the inside holding the window in? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's literally just like a rubber molding. That yeah, they over the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the cleanest red paint on the whole car. This bit under here. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look how perfect the paint wow. is underneath, too. That paint is so clean. <laughs> oh, Whoa. there she goes. Now play catch the window. Yeah. You oh, it? you just have to watch a little bit of trim at the back. It's not. Sick. That was that was, that was so easy. Okay. <laughs> That came out okay. I always thought I was gonna oh, be there's no rust. That, there is was, no rust. Yeah, you know what's funny? It actually looks really cool with just a whole window. Like imagine if they didn't have the, the bit down the middle, just like a one yeah, big window. That that's the whole sick. point. I think I think the other thing about the emu wings is they look mint. Yeah. They look really cool. And especially open on a campsite. Can you imagine like but imagine having this like open? Imagine if you turned it to like Jeep spec <laughs> and just had it all open, like people hanging out the window and stuff. That'd be sick. But Dan, um, look! What, what, not, what? No rust. There's no rust. Oh, I'm so happy. That was my, that? my biggest concern. <laughs> so the, that was one of the things I looked at when I first looked at the car and a lot of people pick up on it. Um, but it's, it's a steel frame in the window seal. Mm. And then cause that split, it's just rusted over the years. Yeah. But that was when I first looked at it, I was like, Oh God, I thought it was this actual lip, but yeah, it's not, there's no rust in the body itself. Dude, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> gonna be really cool. Well, that's, yeah, look, we're gonna put the fridge there. That's all I'm saying. The only other thing to consider is um, you can't run uh, third row seats once you've got the MU wing in there. Just because of the way the hinges are. Oh, okay. For like side impact, if you oh, have okay. a smash or, you know, if the, the hinges sort of hang into where the passengers would be. So that's something to consider, but the chances of me putting the third row seat back in are like, Patrick gets it. You think, oh, I'm, I'm going to use that, and then you, yeah. you unbolt it for one camping trip. You never put it back in. No. Exactly. Yeah. So now we, um, yeah, clean that up, and then um, we'll go through everything that comes in the kit to install the uh, frame. Yeah, that was way easier than it should have been. Now you pull out all this old 
glue. glue. Uh, nah, because there's um, pinch weld that goes over that lip. Oh, okay. You know what oh, pinch so weld is? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Pinch weld goes on first, oh, and the, okay. the frame glues to the pinch weld. Oh, yeah. right. Gotcha. Which is good because you're not actually. So the best one of the things yeah, I it's like. It's not actually is, permanent. Yeah, it's not permanent. You're not modifying the car, which is something that I think's important. You just you're take the pinch weld off not and then hacking it's... up the body, or you know, yes, cutting out chunks or drilling big holes in it or anything like that. You just literally, if you ever for some reason you know want to go back to original, yeah. When they're a collector's car in another ten years, because every P plate cut big holes in them everywhere. <laughs> And did stupid stuff like put lips in them and big tyres. It's um, you, Dan. You're, the, you're, the, you're, the, you're describing know. yourself. I'm allowed, to, I'm allowed to make fun of others because I make fun of myself at the same time, all right? Uh, <laughs> Another clean rag. Go over that again. Look how red it is. It's shiny. This is the uh, install kit that comes with the Emu Wing, and it's got everything you need to put it in your car. Sick, and it's really well packaged. Check this link. We were asking before how it all attaches. So, we've got... The actual weather seal that goes on the uh, wing itself. That is the pinch weld we were talking about. It goes over the uh, edge and then you glue or seal the frame to that with the sealer, which is also supplied with that uh, sicker mm. marine adhesive. It's gotta be waterproof. Means, yeah, which means you'd hope it's waterproof. Well, you know, it is gonna be going in pretty deep bug holes. So oh, up, so. <laughs> up to the windows, you reckon? <laughs> yeah. You go first, we'll send Patrick in. Yeah, Patrick can do it. Those are fancy. These are the hinges that are supplied. Um, they are labelled. Those are fancy hinges. As you can see, they're pretty cool sort of design to actually wow, swing out. Awesome. Yeah, swings the the wing out and and clears the body as yeah, it comes out. out. Yeah, yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a little marker. Which we'll get to that later. I'll show you. Thing for the glue. Right on there. Bottle opener. Keys. Oh yeah, of course. It's, it's lockable. lockable. And there's all your little nuts and bolts for the uh, install. These are really neat. Oh, I think they're really neat. Whether you've got the glass, so these are available, the Emu Wing, in either a glass or an aluminium sheet. Um, I went with the alloy just because I like the look of it and I think it's tougher. Like, you don't have to worry about knocking it. They're, they're tough in glass anyway, like they're automotive glass, but alloy is just sort of easier. And again, on the driver's side, you're not looking out that window. That's another reason I thought there's no real need to have glass there. Passenger side, maybe. You're gonna look out as you merge in traffic and that sort of thing. So that's something to think about, but obviously drivers, you can't see out that window anyway. So these are the little buttons that secure the wing itself to the hinges, which are really neat. Once they go on the outside, we'll show that later. The whole thing with this is it looks like like it was a factory install, like it looks really tidy. A lot of people set up um, gull wings, but I think they sort of look a bit agricultural, some of them, you know, whether you're running like a piano hinge up the top or sort of looks like something that belongs on a shed door more than a car. <laughs> so I know it's only a patrol, but I like to keep these things a little bit classy and gas struts, which are awesome. But all we need for now is that pinch weld, which will be the first thing to go on the car. So that's all this surface nice and clean. It's bright red under there, which is awesome. But um, we're gonna start running this pinch weld. So um, with pinch weld, with or any sort of door seal really, you wanna have the join at the bottom. Obviously, you're not letting any water seep in, and if there is water seeping in the actual seal itself, it'll run back out sort of thing. So gravity is your friend on that one, so we'll start in the center at the bottom. Never would have even thought of that. <laughs> I'll let my OCD take over. Should I measure where the center is exactly? <laughs> no, it gets glued over anyway. Maybe I will. Yeah, I'm gonna measure. <laughs> I must know. Now, can you see it from the inside? It'll upset me. This is important. How good's my eye? It was five mil off center, Patrick. <laughs> Would have been disastrous. Right there. Okay. That's the center. You don't have to do that. <laughs> but it would have annoyed me. <laughs> like I said before, the main thing to watch when you're doing this is that you're um, grabbing all the trims with the pinch weld as you push it on. Make sure that you push it tight into the corners. And then as you get up to the head lining, you're making sure that you're grabbing the head lining as well. Otherwise you'll have issues with that wanting to um, fall off once it gets in the sun, like so. That looks really neat. Yeah, it looks good with a bit of pinch weld in there, yeah. that's for sure. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. So obviously you're not going to see the pinch weld from the outside once, once the um, frame seals to it, but you will see it from the inside. So you want to make sure, like I said, that you've got all these trims in there. That's nice. That's... Yeah, that's me. <laughs> what do you reckon, boss? Yeah. Liam wishes he bought. Liam wishes he bought a wagon. No. <laughs> just just so he could do this. <laughs> it's like it's like having canopy doors on your wagon. Well, that's it. Yeah. That's the thing. Hard. Like think of like every you. Well, that's the other thing people buy. I've talked to a few guys that have had 
canopies with sliding windows and I reckon that's a pain. Yeah, I don't for the know same why, reason. Was, why would you... Because really, unless you're using the third row seats or you've got your dog in the back or something, you're never really cracking that that window. They're mainly just showing that the people in the back seats didn't pass out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The reason they'll put it The aircon is way up there and you're way back here. <laughs> We're just going to leave about 5 mil of overhang there where I cut it. It's basically anything that, that gets in the sun or in the weather conditions, things are going to move and change a little bit especially with seals and that sort of thing. So you don't want to be cutting them to their, they're the perfect length right when you um, install them. Things will move inevitably. And as I said before, you don't want to be coming up short on the seal. Beautiful. And then Too what you do is then. pick that up, put that end uh, in first, and then push that down. Does that down. create a bubble? Huh? See? Oh, wow. uh, he's good. You like that? Wow. He's good. And the idea of that is that you're actually you're giving it that not you're not really preloading it because it's not going to move the whole way around yeah. but you're not trying to pull yeah, it out of the yeah, corners either yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it's yeah. sort of yeah. it's just got that little bit makes the two edges want to push together and um yeah very looks, good looks nice and tidy so that's the old window removed everything cleaned up we've got the pinch weld in i've just cleaned that up again same thing you got to make sure you're sealing to it so you don't want to leave any oily or greasy residue on there so been over that and uh, this is the new frame that we are about to seal on. So that will just seal straight to that pinch weld using that uh, marine sealant that's supplied in the kit. Clamp it on and leave it overnight to cure. Sweet. So we are now going to run a beta sealer uh, around here, right around this pinch weld. And then the uh, frame, as we said before, will seal straight to that. So using the sealer supplied in the kit, just load that up, should be nice and easy. What you want to do is run a slightly thicker bead around the corners if there is anywhere where it's going to want to separate it's going to be there so just a nice reasonable bead not crazy but enough around here and a little bit thicker in the corners this makes me nervous <laughs> especially because the internet's watching this is probably the most focus of this whole job is <laughs> running a bead of sealer okay now we come down to the corner and we're just gonna run that bead a little bit thicker what do you reckon lamb approval that's pretty good to me if Liam says it's okay then the internet will agree i think it is that'll be heaps wait until we put it on flush they're gonna just spread everywhere it looks like not much, but once you put something flat on it, it's kind of a thing of balance because I want it to seal, but I don't want black sealer going absolutely everywhere. Right, yeah. <laughs> you getting keen there, clampy boy? He's preparing the clamps. He's got the clamps, all right. Now, if it leaks, it's on Liam. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, I was gonna say it's damn fault. He didn't put enough silicon on. Now, the, the comment's gonna be 50 50 on this. It's gonna be. 50% you used too much sealer and 50% you didn't use enough sealer. <laughs> Sweet, easy. You get a half a tube of free sealer. This is good stuff. It's for boats, so you'd hope it's watertight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not place it on right. You, you make catch. me nervous. Okay, here we go. You probably definitely already come across this way a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good there. I'm gonna drop the top on first and swing the bottom in. Now, yeah. So, where do you want me to clamp first? Probably the bottom. Let's start at the bottom. Go with your heart. Yeah, right just, there. Just so you're yeah. happy with where it's sitting. Pretty good. I am going to go back a bit. Uh, like maybe yep, like yep. this needs yep. to be come up and... Come down. Yep. Yeah, like that. How's that? Looking good at your end. Just put a couple of them on. Nip them up. Beautiful. Oh, you know when it's oozing, that you got it right. <laughs> just you want a nice even little, just a little bit, not everywhere. We'll start with a few clamps. I'll make sure just have another quick look around it now and make sure that oh, you've got it even. So there's a little bit of room for adjustment around the whole edge of the frame. So you've got a little bit of room to play. But you do have to also remember that there's adjustment in the hinges. So you want it to be very close, but not, you know, if it's half a mil, it's not gonna be, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's adjustment there for that reason. This is something like you could do by yourself, but it's definitely a lot easier having um, Liam in there to, to nip that up. Mostly so you've got someone to blame if something goes wrong. That's it. <laughs> I think the more clamps, the better in this sort of situation. Oh, I think you can never have too many clamps. That probably goes out without saying for anything. It's a flexible piece of aluminium, and you're trying to make sure that the the seal is the sealer is tight the whole way around. That's now, it. Obviously, you run a beta sealer, so there's a little bit of room for give, but you want to make sure that you're not leaving an air gap there for sure, because once that stuff cures, it's pretty much cured for good. That's it. Cool. For 24 hours, is it drying time? Yeah. Leave it to cure for the full 24. So. There is a chart in the instructions that come with this that gives you the curing time for that sealer. Basically 24 hours is full cure time in, in almost any environment. So we're just gonna leave it. Um, I'm in no rush to get this in and I'd rather have the sealer actually cure properly. I think that's one of the main things with any sort of 
sealing job, whether it be a window or an intake manifold, like, you know, either way, you want to make sure that you're giving it the full time to cure before you try and put any sort of pressure or, um, yeah, anything on it. So we'll leave that overnight and um, when we return, we'll be bolting the emu wing on. Super keen to see how it looks, so um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Where the window seal was sitting was shinier than the rest of the car. Yeah, it is. Now I have to polish the car. Yeah. Oh, have, no. you, have you polished the car yet? No, I have not polished this you car haven't. yet. Oh, it's going to come up Mate. awesome. No, that's next. That's the next mod. We're going to run a buff over it. <laughs> Then I'm gonna cry it the first sick. track I go down. <laughs> it looked really good. Look at how like shiny, like even like your tail lights are and everything. Yeah, it's, it's doing, it's so doing well for its age. Shiny. It's good paint. Not like Land Cruiser troubles. Yeah. That's the, that's well, the you know what? How can my car that's five years older than yours have like that worse of paint than this? I think this lived inside. It's lost yeah, most probably. of its life. But how old is yours? 96. Oh. Yours is new. Yeah, that's what I mean. Why is it so scuffed? 96, wow. I know, it looks terrible. I wasn't going to say anything. But... <laughs> just, I don't know, I don't get it. Like, how does that happen? I don't think the white would have been clear over base. It would have just been straight white. Oh, do you reckon feeling? mine's not... Yeah, mine's not clear, actually, yeah. Yeah, yours um, is just white. Yeah, it's just... Which means, yeah. in my opinion, it generally ends up looking worse. losing life quicker. All right, guys, so it's been 24 hours. Uh, the seal is all cured, and I've removed the clamps, and we're ready to go on and fit the emu in. So the first step now that's all cured is to fit these support brackets which bolt on to the hinge bracket there. Just pretty much slide straight on the back of the bolts that come already installed and then use the nuts and the washers that come in the kit to clamp that on. Next step is to mount up the hinges. So these just go straight into the rail here like so. We're just going to nip them up to start with and then fix the emu wing to it and then you've got heaps of adjustment in it. Everything's stainless. <laughs> fancy. That's fancy. Yeah, that's, that's sick. That's what I was talking about. And when it's shut, there's no ugly exposed hinge. Yeah, that's, mm. well, that's it. It's, like, it's, it's like a flush. hinge. Yeah, that's and then, bang, that's nice. <laughs> that's, that's really awesome. neat. You know what I constantly wonder? Yep. Do you think that like normal people that drive like normal cars and don't care about cars, do you think they ever consider, so say when they're stuck behind me going up a hill or on the freeway, do you think they ever consider that some cars aren't fast enough to maintain speed limits? Is that yeah, a thing see, that people that's what think I of? wonder sometimes. Is, is that a thought that crosses their mind? I'll be mind? going up the hill in the Navara, like I said, coming home with that motor today, and you, you know you're going slow, right? But someone's behind you, and you're like, I wonder if this guy knows that I'm doing the best I can. Like, I'm yeah, not intentionally, yeah, that's it. That's I'm it. not that's intentionally going too. this slow. And especially too, like, in a car like mine that's noisy and shit, you, they're probably thinking, oh, that's some souped up hoon mobile. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm on the freeway, like, doing 85 up a hill, and I wonder if they, or like, no, you know what, you know what's annoying? You know when like, you, you, you're trying to, no, when, no, you know what's worse? When you're stuck behind someone that's slow, and you're on a hill and they, oh, they, they go speed past. up. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, that, but you know how they go slow to like let you go around and you don't know if they know that I don't have the capacity if yeah. I want to to go around you. As much as I do, I physically can't. And then the people behind you are like, why is this guy not going around? Yeah, I, just <laughs> wonder, I wonder if people think like, oh yeah, that's that's why he's going slow. That car, it's a, it's a, it's a TD42, no wonder it's slow sort of thing, you know. Like. My, my, the one I hate is you start getting a run up to a hill and then someone in front of you breaks for no apparent reason. Know, and then they zip and then, off. And then they the zip road. off and you're like, thanks, okay, now I'm yeah, in third. Ruin my <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I won't be here shifting up for the next two minutes. <laughs> They don't get it. They drive SUVs that don't have that's souls. It. Well, because that's the thing, like, and that's because that's the other thing you like in this day and age, which it's obviously it's true now, but realistically, obviously, it was harder because the, the technology wasn't there. But re like, a car shouldn't be able to not do the speed limit anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, a, a car, oh, I should rephrase it. Like, a car should be able to do the speed limit no matter where it is. You shouldn't have to do 30 car to the speed limit because it's too slow. It kind of, oh, the hill's too steep. The car just should be able to do it, because it's like, do you reckon? Yeah. Like, I just feel like, I don't know, you think if you design a car, it's, you go, why would you make it so that it can do the speed limit? Yeah, then you end up on the other end of the scale, like, yeah, I've got a three litre and it'll do 80 up any hill, but show me one with 600,000 Ks on it that hasn't been oh, rebuilt three true. times. Yeah, you know? yeah, I've got power, cool. <clears throat> Give me four grand for a set of injectors. <laughs> Sorry, you got a sticker on it? Yeah, this, it's the start of the sticker collection. <laughs> That's it, They're actually like a perfect canvas for sticker boxes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's really neat, neat nice mm. finish. Mm. Mm.
All right, so that's the support brackets on and the hinges. They're just nipped up for now. I've left them out about 10 mil from the face there, which is gonna give me roughly where I want, want it to sit for now. Um, we still gotta adjust that later. So that's all good. And now we're ready to throw the emu wing on. Just a matter of lining that up. It attaches itself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> good. You get him a cordless ratchet, but I just like watching him struggle. <laughs> What did he say? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> you ready? He's going to be excited. It's only half finished and it's already cool. Alright. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, that looks really good. Oh, and it doesn't like clash. It doesn't come anywhere near to clash. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's Those hinges, like, they pull it down and then around. That's just like... You don't even need an awning anymore, Dan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just stand on there stand and here. Yeah, <laughs> just that little wing. <laughs> Man, that's neat. I just love the way that hinge action works. Mm. Yeah. It's sweet. I love how they're so easy. They're it's really just sweet. like, just boop, done. The question is, yeah, this sucks itself in. Yeah. So when you open it up, does it, does it blow your head off? Oh yeah. Fridge? Yes. You reckon, yes? <laughs> Fridge. You can make an effectively working texter, you can probably make a car that works all right too. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. See? We got that. Mitsubishi. Mm. Not sure how I feel about that. I know Patrick loves it. <laughs> now we've got that all adjusted, so I'm going to sit that down like so. Jump on the inside and use the chalk pen that came with the kit to mark where the emu wing's sitting now that we've adjusted it. And then we'll use that line to run the weather seal around. Oh, you can become a graffiti wall, Dan. You can graffiti your to-do list on the inside of <laughs> the, on the inside, inside of the On the outside. To-do. Put car in hole full of mud. I'm looking forward to that day. Next on the list after that is <laughs> cry for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now there should be some nice orange lines. Look at that. Look at that. So you're doing it just on the inside of that? Outside. Oh, the, sorry, the, yeah, the outside. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just run it around the outside of that. Now, the key here is to run it through the hinges first. Ah, uh, smart. I've already cleaned that before I marked it with chalk, so it'll have a good surface to stick to. See how now straight he can place. What do you reckon is that center? Oh, this is important. Ah, uh, to the. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can get pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close isn't good enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to run it a few mil in from the line there because obviously there's a thickness of the text that it take up. Once it's stuck on, you can um, close the door, making sure that it's sitting in the right spot and leave this sort of facing into the sun for a bit so that you're getting the heat through the panel and that'll mm. help the adhesive really grab to the mm. surface better. So when are you gonna do the rear quarter chop, Dan? <sighs> no rear quarter chop. <laughs> no, no soup for you. It has crossed my mind. Oh really? Yeah, if I for did, a rear bar. If, if it gets caved in, then we'll do a quarter. Yeah, well that's, the, you don't need to do it if it's damaged. That's, Yours are clear, I can use the, the clearest quarters in all the West. <laughs> They don't have rust holes in it. It's still attached and I plan on keeping it that way. Didn't go all this time, you know? Been mm. looked after and cared for. Yeah, just to be turned into a... To have some bloke <laughs> with an angle grinder have at it. How's that? Good? Yeah. No, it feels quite tight. Bloody hell. That one can do up a little bit, but obviously the um, seal's gonna compress a bit as well. Oh, That's it's very good. That is very good. Oh yeah. I'm a fan of that. That's everything fitted up, adjusted. We've got the seal fitted, the door closed. That just looks mint. I'm happy with how sleek it is. Final touch, Lamb, what do you reckon? Yeah, put it on. Put it on. <laughs> put it on. Don't stuff it up. Put it on angle to make Patrick happy. No. If I put it on angle, I'm going to stare at it and get upset. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. What do you reckon? Oh, it's yeah? pretty good. Not bad. Yeah, you nailed, you nailed it. <laughs> Just that easy. There we go. <laughs> Loves it. Someone commented on one of the videos the other day and said you need to have an Aussie Arvo sticker on your car. Yeah. I don't think they would have sold that one. Yeah. That was on there before I did anything. <laughs> First mod. First mod. <laughs> sticker. <laughs> Two I kilowatts. Think I think stickers pass as a mod these days. <laughs> yeah, like you put a Ridgeline 4x4 sticker in your car. You practically... Like, superior. No, superior. One oh, of the yeah, shiny ones like with the chrome and stuff yeah. on it. Yeah, you practically like... Game changing build of that game. Changing build. <laughs> yep. So I've just got to finish nipping up these because I reckon our adjustment was pretty spot on to start with. Obviously, yeah, you can always tweak it as the seal compresses because they will, it'll, it'll, once it sits shut for a while with pressure on it, it'll sort of take the shape a bit. 
so we'll um, nip them up at that for now and I can always tweak them up a bit more later and uh, yeah and the other thing is with these latches the go with them is that they come loose not not done up this is a cam so it's wearing a twist around it's got sort of a bevel on it okay so the camera can see it there's your little sort of edge you want to make that so it's not uh, hitting on the edge but also not loose when you close it so the go with that is you can just grab it and just tweak it slightly with a shifter mm. that is me all right close her up Yep, tight fit. It's tight, but once the, once the seal takes shape, I reckon it'll be smart. All right, guys, that's the Emu Wing in the GQ. It's now been in there for about two and a half weeks. It's been great. I've had the fridge in there. I've had toolboxes in there. It's made access to the back of the car so much easier. Um, not only do you gain a whole another area of storage, but you don't have to open the big rear swinging door with the tire on it every time you want to get at something. So like I said, for having the fridge or whatever in there, it's just like so easy, just bang. And you're straight in. You don't have to don't have to worry about opening rear doors. Yeah, the install's super easy, as you can see. Came up really neat and I'm really happy with it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, look forward to seeing a few more on the GQ because we've got heaps more coming. Cheers, guys.